Hello, I'm Ryan. And I'm Catherine. We're part of the Blendjet team. And husband and wife. If you're one of the 5 million people who use a Blendjet portable blender, thank you. A few years ago, I had a freak accident and almost died. Daily smoothies have helped me recover. We created Blendjet to help people live healthier lives by making it easy to enjoy perfectly blended smoothies and protein shakes anytime, anywhere. The Blendjet 2 portable blender is powerful, USB rechargeable, cleans itself, and comes in over 30 colors. Get yours now on Blendjet.com. Uh, now, this uh, bit of news is just in from the wonderful world of Twitter. Let's see if I can bring you just a flavour of the wonderful music that's involved here. Here we go. Is, the, is it going to play? Here she is. Some look at our past as evidence that America's founding principles are bad. They say the promise of freedom is just made up. Some think our ideas are not just wrong, but racist and evil. Nothing could be further from the truth. I have seen evil. In China, they commit genocide. In Iran, they murder their own people for challenging the government. And when a woman tells you about watching soldiers throw her baby into a fire. Well, there we are. It's just a little snippet of Nikki Haley, who has declared the intention to run for President of the United States. So a perfect time to welcome Simon Bax, uh, Simon Marks back to these airways from Washington, D.C. Uh, Simon, this won't be a massive surprise, but at least she's now pulled the plug and done it. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely no surprise at all. Nikki Haley uh, has hinted that she was planning to explore a presidential run for many months. Uh, indeed, in uh, one uh, particular moment illustrative of that, that perhaps she now regrets, uh, she uh, jetted to Britain uh, to spend some time with Liz Truss when Liz Truss was foreign ah. secretary shortly before Liz Truss became prime minister uh, and was proudly putting out pictures of herself alongside uh, Liz Truss, very much to sort of underscore the notion that there was a whole new era uh, of female transatlantic leadership that was uh, about to uh, take place. Well, we haven't seen very much of that picture, uh, of course, in the uh, in the weeks uh, since Liz Truss's uh, brief premiership in the UK came to an end. But Nikki Haley definitely believes that as a former US ambassador to the United Nations under Donald Trump, and remember, she uh, in- engaged in the remarkable feat of leaving the Trump administration without incurring at the time the wrath uh, of uh, former President Donald Trump. She believes that that experience, coupled with her time as governor of South Carolina uh, and with her personal background as the daughter of Indian immigrants to the United States, makes her a different kind of Republican uh, to challenge uh, the party uh, for the presidential nomination in 2024. And take a listen to the message that again, accompanied by that rather cloying music, she presents to the party about the dangers that lie ahead for it. Republicans have lost the popular vote in seven out of the last eight presidential elections. That has to change. Joe Biden's record is abysmal, but that shouldn't come as a surprise. The Washington establishment has failed us over and over and over again. It's time for a new generation of leadership to rediscover fiscal responsibility, secure our border, and strengthen our country, our pride, and our purpose. And the band played on and does so for about three and a half minutes. It's a pretty long video designed to introduce herself uh, to Republicans who may not be particularly familiar with her. I think it is fair to say this is a long shot bid for the presidency by Nikki Haley, uh, but certainly also a bid to play a role at a prominent level in any future Republican administration that may be formed here in January of 2025, even if she is not the person being sworn in and taking the oath of office at the inauguration. OK, Simon, let's do flying saucers next. Where are we at with that? Well, we still know uh, far uh, less about them than we would like, although we do now know one thing, and that was announced yesterday at the White House by Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre. I know there have been questions and, and concerns about this, but there is no, again, no indication of aliens or extraterrestrial activity with these recent takedowns. Again, there is no indication of aliens or terrestrial 
extraterrestrial activity with these recent takedowns. Wanted to make sure that the American people knew that, all of you knew that, uh, and it was important for us to say that from here because we've been hearing a lot about it. Not clear to me why there was quite so much laughter in the room as she said that because it was only on Sunday that the top US general who's been involved uh, in leading uh, the efforts to deal with these high altitude uh, objects, whatever they are, I mean we know the first one of the four that have been shot down was of course that high altitude Chinese surveillance balloon but we know nothing about the other three objects that were removed from the skies above the United States and Canada uh, other than the fact that the authorities deemed that they posed a threat to uh, civilian aircraft but the, the general in charge of the effort at the Pentagon only on Sunday told reporters that he was unable to rule out the idea that these may be extraterrestrial uh, in nature. Uh, so uh, we heard from the White House press secretary there and also yesterday from the National Security Council spokesman John Kirby that no, definitely little green men are not responsible for these craft. And that's an effort by the White House, I think, to try and head off what has become uh, a conspiracy theory driven popular culture conversation that is frankly beginning to constrain President Biden's ability to act independently of it, particularly in terms of how to revive conversations with the Chinese government that have been completely derailed by the initial balloon that was shot down uh, over the waters of South Carolina by U.S. authorities. The military say they've now recovered a substantial portion of the 30-foot surveillance payload that that balloon was carrying. Uh, The Chinese, of course, initially insisted it was a weather balloon that had drifted off track. U.S. intelligence say no, it was absolutely designed to intercept communications, particularly uh, those uh, of uh, a a military nature as it hovered above various military bases uh, across the United States, to which the Chinese have now said, well, the Americans have uh, a a high-altitude surveillance balloon program uh, of their own. So uh, there are questions abounding about the other three objects that were removed from the sky and the possibility of more to come, because we now now know that at NORAD they have tightened the sensitivity of the radar equipment that scours the skies and therefore, because they've tightened the sensitivity, more of these objects are showing up. We don't know if there's just suddenly a plethora uh, of unidentified objects in the skies above America that weren't there before or whether they're simply being discovered now because the sensitivity of those mm. radars uh, have been tightened. But certainly, It's quite a thought, uh, Simon, isn't it, that they, they were there all along and they just didn't adjust yeah, the focus to I see mean, them? Correct, because if, if these things do pose, I mean, some of them flying at about 40,000 feet lower than the uh, Chinese balloon, if these things do pose a threat to civilian aircraft today and they were there yesterday, presumably they posed a threat to civilian aircraft then as well. We may get more on this. Lloyd Austin, um, the Defence Secretary, of course, is over with the NATO uh, crowd in Brussels, and we've been reporting on that in some of his words, introducing the meeting, which is ostensibly all about Ukraine, but I think they may well be having a conversation about these kind of aerial um, uh, surveillance devices and things like that as the meeting goes on. Now, a solemn moment, um, Simon, once again, we're talking about uh, a mass shooting, this time on a university campus you can tell us about. Yep, overnight in Lansing, Michigan, the campus of Michigan State University uh, came under attack. At least three people killed, five wounded uh, in what appears to have been uh, a targeted assault. The school uh, told students in an alert to run, hide and fight. Uh, which is a slightly curious message to deliver because it's not clear that you can simultaneously run, hide and fight. Uh, but nonetheless, that's what students were told to do uh, at 8.30pm uh, last night local time uh, in East Lansing, Michigan. Uh, Chris Rossman is the Deputy Chief of Police uh, and had news uh, in the early hours of this morning about the 43-year-old suspect. The suspect in this incident was located outside of the MSU campus, and it does appear that that suspect has uh, died 
from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Investigations continue into the motive for this assault on Michigan State University. There have, of course, been uh, many other attacks on institutions of learning, both universities and high schools and elementary schools uh, all across the United States. The university president uh, at Michigan State uh, says that the school is now going to engage in two days of emergency operations and it is time for the students, staff and faculty to think grieve and be together after a day of shock and heartbreak and of course uh, none of this changes the calculus on capitol hill about america's urgent need for gun control just to mention very briefly you've got some important economic numbers it's the inflation data i think you get in the next quarter an hour or so sam uh, yeah about uh, the bottom of the hour i think okay. consumer price uh, index numbers for january will be coming out uh, the eyes of the markets and the eyes of the white house will very much be on them the hope is that inflation uh, will uh, will see those numbers lower uh, for a seventh straight month, the administration certainly hopes that that will be indicative of the fact that the Federal Reserve's raising of interest rates uh, has uh, sort of soothed America's febrile inflation hit brow. But let's see what the numbers actually say when they're published. Good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Simon Marks joining us from Washington, D.C. Attention shoppers, BlendJet's Black Friday sale is on, and it's our biggest sale ever. Stock up for the holidays, because the more BlendJets you buy, the more you save. With over 50 colors and patterns to choose from, there's a BlendJet that's perfect for everyone on your list. Skip the mall madness. We've got you covered with fast, free shipping. What are you waiting for? Go to BlendJet.com and take advantage of our epic Black Friday sale. That's BlendJet.com. 